Welcome back. I'm Katie. I'm Heidi. And together we're the Sunride Tribe. This week's project is going to be the walls of the van, finally. Yeah, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure out where we need to put our furring strips. Another thing we have to decide is whether we're going to start from the front to the back or the back to the front. Um, because we have the garage area walls already up. Um, it's going to offset a, a little bit, so we're going to have to do some measuring and figure that out. But it should be pretty awesome. Uh, we got these old wood planks um, that are different colors and stuff uh, that we're going to put up. So should look pretty cool when it's done. Yeah. All right. All right. Ready? Yeah. So you've seen us cut and put up plenty of furring strips, so we're going to fast forward through a majority of that. But we did see that a lot of the boards we were using were warped and kind of cut incorrectly, so we brought those in. Our four little helpers did come and help us sift through the remainder of our boxes that we had to see if we had enough usable pieces. Alright, so let me kind of give you an idea of what's going on here. I'm out here again this morning trying to get some stuff done while it's cooler. So then when Katie comes home, we can hopefully just start putting boards up. So I came out here to finish putting in some of the furring strips and take a look at things, but we have a couple of things we have to work around not really issues but just general things that we didn't really think of last night and now we're going to have to address them so i have the furring strips up for the most part down this wall here and i've got one board attached but when i was putting the board in what happened was I needed to take into consideration our slats that are going across for the bed. And with the board sitting flush all the way down here, it wasn't going to leave enough room for the slats or at least as much room as I was going to be comfortable with sleeping on. So I mounted this first board up a little bit higher. I think what I might do is trim some of these pieces off on the bottom here so that the slats can fit in there a little bit better. And I just want to make sure that things are going to match up everywhere before we start piling more and more boards on top of each other going up the wall. The other thing we have to take into consideration is over here, this is going to be the start of our kitchen area. So basically where the bed ends right here is going to start some of the kitchen cabinetry. And we're going to be putting some kind of tile up uh, or backsplash. We haven't decided what yet, but we don't want to waste these nicer boards on that so I'm going to have to find some of the plywood that we have and see if that's going to match up for this area over here. So anyway that's where I'm at. I don't know how much longer I'll be out here because it's almost noon and I do have to get some work done today at my actual job and it's also starting to get really really hot. <laughs> Alright, I'm out here for the start of day three of our wall build. The dogs are not happy about it. Um, but this is what we managed to get done so far last night. 
so what I'm hoping to get accomplished this morning before it gets too hot is we need to get some more furring strips up on the top here all the way down. As we mentioned before, some of our boards were warped. We ended up getting three to four more boxes, and as we were working, we found a handful more that were warped, not to length, and not to width. So I'm trying to fish this wire through here. I got the other one last night, no problem, but this one's giving me issues. Um, but these are gonna be for our little reading lights in the bed area. <laughs> I bet you're wondering what I'm messing around, why I'm messing around with this. Well, we're gonna cut our mattress down tonight so it actually fits. So these little, the little piece that holds in the blades was not working. So we ended up taking some extremely powerful magnets and uh, now it works. All the videos you see of happy people during van builds, they're editing out all the frustrating parts. Because this has been nothing but frustrating. done we're done for now for now for most of it yeah we have a little bit to do in the kitchen but we need to get our cabinets before we put the rest up yeah and I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out they were definitely a challenge because 
barn wood is never perfect and so there are some uneven spots and everything but I think that gives it more character. Yeah I think it gives it more character definitely some frustrating moments with it. This is like day three where I thought we were going to be done yeah. and even at today I thought maybe we weren't going to get done with it but I think it came out beautifully and I couldn't be happier with the way it looks. The product could have been maybe a little higher quality I guess but that's just quality control at where they're the milling locations. So. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I don't know, did we ever talk about um, insulation and what we did with insulation? No, I think we maybe briefly, we recorded a whole video a long time ago on that and then uh, we never, <laughs> never happened. Yeah, that was prior to <laughs> us really starting uh, the channel, but we can talk a little bit about the insulation we have now, if you like. So the insulation we picked was the Havelock wool insulation. It's become pretty popular and that's what's in the walls. Now what's in the ceiling is the Artec foam insulation sheets that you can buy at any hardware store. And the reason we went with that was because honestly it was already there, at least half of it. So the people we bought the van from used to be a semi-pro racer and this front part was kind of their race day lounge area. So it was all insulated and already had sound deadening and all of this other stuff done to it. So we decided rather than spend more money, we would just carry on with what they had already started and we finished up the ceiling with the Artec in the back. We went with the Havelock wool uh, because, well, it came down to between this and the recycled denim. denim yeah. And I really liked the recycled dem denim. It was, it was pretty close uh, cost-wise, maybe slightly cheaper because we could pick it up at Home Depot um, in person so we weren't having to pay for shipping or anything like that, whereas the Havelock wool is not available locally. But the big thing with the denim is that it is not mold resistant and you could end up getting mold um, or condensation inside the walls with the recycled denim. So we ended up going with the Havelock. We bought two of the bales. Yep. Yep. So obviously we weren't doing the entire van, we were just doing the walls. But that seems to have been enough for the 170 Sprinter we have to do the walls from the front and the back and all of the doors insulated. And then a lot of the little gaps, so we filled in the gaps up above the cab and everything with it. Um, and I guess time will tell Yeah. how well it ends up working. But I mean, so far we, we did that one camping trip. That's why we initially put it all up to begin with was we did a camping trip. Uh, last year, last year, yeah, last yeah. last Thanksgiving. So we did a camping trip last Thanksgiving. We wanted it up for that to see if it you know would work pretty well, and it did help significantly. Mm -hmm. So we've installed the lights prior to, but we didn't have the switch up. So Heidi ended up putting that in. So yeah, so today I installed the switch. It's a dual zone switch, so we wanted the ceiling lights to be in two zones, so the living area and the bedroom area. So that's what I went ahead and installed over here and hooked it up via a 12 volt specific switch. We'll put a link below if anybody's looking for those because I know they're hard to find. And then also our Victron uh, solar inverter charger monitor over here. So um, basically it doesn't come with a Bluetooth or any kind of remote. This is kind of the remote. So in the future when we want to use the inverter because we want to use our blender or our Instapod or maybe charge a laptop or something, we just reach over and flip the switch. The inverter comes on, stays on until we're done using it, and then we can turn it off right there without having to get into the back of the garage. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like our walls, please leave a comment down below. We'd really appreciate it. See you next Sunday. Until next time. Bye. Bye.